Welcome to this presentation on model predictive control, the basics and its uses. Model predictive control or MPC encompasses a wide range of control methods using single input, single output, and multi-input, multi-output processes. It was first used at Shell Oil in 1970 and is now used in a wide variety of industries from aerospace to petrochemicals. It requires a model of the process to minimize the difference between the predicted output and the desired output, and it can be used in simple and complex processes. In this presentation, the following topics will be addressed. How model predictive control works, when it should be applied, disadvantages, and an everyday example. So, how does model predictive control work? In its simplest form, MPC predicts future outputs using the current inputs and outputs and future controller actions. Basically, it uses what is happening now to predict what will happen in the future. Every MPC uses three elements, a process model, an objective function that uses the receding horizon method, and ultimately results in a control law. The model of the process describes the process dynamics of the inputs and outputs. MPC can use feed forward, feed backward, and disturbance models. The objective function is also known as the cost function. The goal of MPC is to minimize this function. This is the sum of all the terms that have control requirements. These terms are weighted according to their significance in the process. The objective function can be linear or nonlinear, and the linearity is determined according to the constraints. It follows a predefined trajectory computed by the receding horizon method in order to calculate future outputs. The receding horizon method predicts the behavior of a predetermined range or horizon. It takes into consideration current and future constraints and calculates all the values within the horizon starting at time t. These values are then sent to the controller, which contains the control law, where all values at intervals greater than t are rejected. The control law is the mathematical formula used by the controller based on the computations of the objective function and process model. The control law receives the output values calculated for the horizon from the objective function and rejects all values except for those at time t. This in turn sends a signal to the controlled variables and the entire process is repeated again at new outputs calculated from the new inputs, outputs, and constraints. Now, the control law rejects all the values except time t plus 1. These iterations are continued until the end of the horizon is met. This is a block flow diagram of a process that uses model predictive control. The control takes place in the process model and optimizer. The optimizer contains the objective function and constraints, and this is used to determine the control law. The predicted outputs are compared to the trajectory and the errors are minimized. The future outputs are sent to the process and then this entire process is repeated. Model predictive control is so versatile it can be used in virtually any situation, but when is it typically applied? MPC is used when minimizing error between the set point and trajectory is important. It is also superior to other controllers when the process has multiple constraints and or nonlinear constraints. MPC can also help with optimization problems because minimizing the cost function doubles as an optimization tool. Additionally, MPC is ideal for processes with dead time and slow dynamics because it intrinsically accounts for dead time. Although there are many advantages to using MPC, there are also a few disadvantages. MPC is used when there are constraints in the system, but this requires a complex derivation of the control law, and the complexity continues to increase with increasing constraints. Another issue with this process control is the potential of a suboptimal optimization. This occurs because the software package will try to complete the optimization as fast as possible, which can lead to inaccurate findings. A final disadvantage is the stability of the system because of its time dependence, so it is hard or impossible to measure the stability while using MPC. An everyday example of model predictive control is in a global positioning system or GPS. A GPS takes a desired location or set point and predicts a desired route or reference trajectory based on some set of constraints. These constraints can include shortest distance, shortest time, least amount of tolls, or others. The objective function is then to proceed to the set point while minimizing the required travel time and meeting all the constraints. Intrinsic constraints include staying on roadways, avoiding one-way roads, and other general traffic trends. The GPS will continually compute the predicted route throughout the trip while encountering disturbances such as traffic jams and construction detours. If the user veers from the route, the GPS will have to reroute and define a new reference trajectory while still predicting the desired end location and meeting all the required constraints. Thank you for taking the time to listen to and watch our presentation. We hope you enjoyed learning about model predictive control.